Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. El Metodo, or The Method, Movie, Thoughts. So, I guess I'll just start with the ending. The shot of her walking, you know, across this, just the road with, you know, all that's left of the mass of protest, you know, with this car slightly on fire and just, you know, you can tell something bad went down here. And she's just walking down this road that is just, you know, kind of just desolate. And, you know, it, it almost looks like something post-apocalyptic or something. I did have to quote Film Brain with his trademark line of symbolism, because that was really driving home the point that, you know, you know, we are headed towards our own destruction, you know, if we continue to be so, you know, power hungry and willing to sell out, you know, even, you know, someone close to us. I do like that that was how it ended up, you know, I do think the ending is pretty well perfect of the film, that you know, you have these moments where you're sure that, you know, she's standing by the door. It's like, if you leave this room, and I'm the only one left in the room, then I get the job, right? And they're, like, trying to lure the other to get... I mean, something like that. You might think it was from, like, a sitcom or something, and, you know, it seems like a ludicrous scenario, but... You know, if, if I were to explain that to someone who hadn't watched the movie, they would laugh. But the way it plays out in the movie, you're just on the edge of your seat, you know. It really works. And it's just this merciless struggle, you know, even between these two people who shouldn't be at all against each other, you know. The... You know, eventually she even gets to the point where she's like, you know, you know what, I'm not going to do this. And he doesn't, you know, and that's kind of, the, you know, so eventually, you know, it was a test of will that, you know, who's going to be too much of a human being for this position, you know, that was really the whole thing, the whole movie, the entire method, you know, who is too much of a human being to work for us. I would say it's pretty clearly anti-capitalist, or at least against the psychotics that pure capitalism breeds, and that's pretty much, you know, I think that's pretty much a given fact. I think it's basically either you accept that or you don't fully you know, which is not to say that capitalism is bad. Anyway, I'm not going to debate capitalism in this video. If you would like me to, let me know, and maybe I'll make another video for that. Anyway, the... You know, the... the when you find out, if, you know, if you had to guess, I didn't try, but if you had to guess, if, you know, are there going to be two people left over and it's going to be just down to those two. If you had asked that near the beginning of the film, you could probably guess it was going to be, you know, the two with the history, because, you know, what better way, you know, it's not just an opponent, it's someone you once considered spending your life with, you know, this is big stuff, you know, if, if you're willing to sell out someone like that, you know, you are their kind of employee, you know, they, they need you to be entirely for the company and for nothing else, for no one else. So that was really perfect, but, but yeah, not a huge surprise, but it really didn't need to be, in my opinion, you know, <clears throat> and it really worked, that that was kind of, you know, I, I don't think any other <clears throat> final pairing would have been anywhere near as effective. I like that they switch up the locations a little bit once, I guess, the first two or three, something like that, leave, you know, or <laughs> leave, once they are weeded out. That, you know, we then, you know, they get the bathroom break and this whole thing, you know, 
it would be too much if the entire movie had nothing. I love the fact that it does not leave the office from the first scene to the last scene. Literally, you know, from right, you know, the first thing we see is them arriving at the office, and then the last thing we see is her leaving the entire building. Those are the only two bits where we see something really outside, or at least that is seen from the outside of the building, you know, that was perfect. You, you really got this sense of just claustrophobia and isolation. That was perfect. But, but yeah, you know, the, the bathroom and then gotta talk about the sex scene. It wasn't, it, it wasn't in any way gratuitous. It was a perfect, because it's again, it's the power struggle, you know. We have, you know, the, the two of, you know, I, I'm not going to go into names. I, I think her name was Nieve, but I'm going to call him the Spanish Macho because I'm no good with names. Nieve and the Spanish Macho have already been, you know, I, I don't know, I suppose you could call it flirting. They've at least, you know, they've, cl they've, they've gone up against each other you know, in the meeting room already. So, you know, when they're in there, you know, and you can really tell from the moment he goes in there, it just, you know, it didn't surprise you that they ended up sleeping together, or at least that he made an attempt to sleep with her. And, you know, she even, she goes as far as taking off the shirt and then, you know, telling him, now leave, you know. It's, it's very clear, kind of, you know, they are seducing each other, I suppose you could say, you know, and they end up, you know, they're having sex, and it seems like it was him who seduced her, like he is now in control, but then she leaves before he's done and all, and then the power has shifted, you know, because, and, and that, that was just fantastic. And then later on, they, you know, get back to that with the, you know, Eduardo Noriega. I remember his actual name. Noriega and Nieve, you know, kind of teasing him or, you know, maybe even bullying him, really. But, yeah, that was... The, the lunch break, I quite liked that, you know, it's, you know, one thing would have been to not feed them at all. That, that would, you know, that, that would be one thing, but to give them food, which they're not very prone to eating, that, that they certainly don't enjoy, it's actually worse in, in this twisted, demented way, it's worse because they're going to be even more hungry because now you've reminded them that they were hungry, you know, and just, you know, we don't know for sure if it was downright bad food, but it probably was, I don't think it was like downright, it would hurt them really bad, but it was probably at least very bad quality food, like, you know, it wouldn't taste good. And, you know, yeah, it just wouldn't hurt them a lot, at least. But then, you know, they even have her, the, the secretary, you know, Mon Monsa, joining them. And, you know, she, she's just, she is priceless. I, you know, and she's like, oh, don't, what, don't you like it? Don't you want to eat some more? And just this whole thing, and just really pushing them towards, and... You know, and we have this sort of examination of just social behavior because they all agree they don't like the food, and there, you know, there are seven of them, and it's clearly bad food. You know, it's not like they're just what I order this other thing or I prefer this other thing, and then you bring me this thing, which is good food, but it's not what I want. No, it's bad food. They have every right to complain, but. Look at her, she, the, the eyes, she seems so sweet, and it's, it might not be her fault, I mean, she didn't cook it, did she? She's just 
working for she apologized she said you know it's, it's not our fault she just that there's this problem with the protesters you understand that whole just perfect you know spot on and then she you know goads the you know because it it, it slips out of the what shall I call him? The, the nervous guy. Nervous guy. Very Dr. Cox. Nervous guy. It slips right out of him that, you know, at least I'm not working for a union. And, you know, she gets, you know, very antagonistic towards him. And like, well, you know, she even pulls the, I don't know, it seems like you should be loyal to the company. I mean, we are the ones trying to hire you here. And, you know, just the whole thing. It's Perfect. And then the other guy gets up, leaves, and then comes right back in and is like, yeah, I was the spy. It's just, you know, and you didn't see that coming. But really, you know, it kind of, you, you almost should have because he was the most, you know, it, it was very clearly, no, not clearly, but, you know, it makes sense that they staged, you know, I don't want to answer these questions. What are you, what is this all about? You know, that whole act, as it turns out it was, you know. And honestly, you know, the film doesn't make it clear, but there was at least one point near the end, after you find out that he was, you know, the mole, or, you know, whatever. I seriously considered that maybe there is no job. Maybe they just like to screw with people. They, they just get their jollies from just destroying people completely, shredding their humanity. You know, on the subject of shredding, just gotta love, you know, she's sitting there, the guy comes up, I, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, do I really have to fill out this application again? I already filled out like two. Mm -hmm. You still have to fill it out. Okay, but yeah, and and she's just like sitting there shredding documents, you know, like there's nothing just hilarious, you know, she is she's worth the price of admission all by herself and The the little you know, I guess it wasn't an accident that it was the Spanish macho that she got between the legs of to fix the computers, you know, that was probably because they knew what, you know, they could tell that he was that type that would, you know, I don't think it would have affected the others, excuse me, as much. The, the whole issue of, you know, sexuality and reproduction, I thought it was really nicely brought up when, you know, the, I, I guess, second test, third test, maybe, when, you know, they're talking about the bunker, and, you know, the, 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 the other woman starts talking about, like, oh, I can cook for you, and, you know, and eventually it does get down to, you know, Nieve just outright, you know, she just, she plays her trump card. Her gender and ages trump card. I will birth your children. And just right there, it's just <laughs> like they all say, you know, okay, you're in. You know, and that's just, it's, it's this great kind of, and, and the other, you know, the other woman, she hadn't thought of that. You know, it was like, or, or maybe she just wasn't willing to go that far. You know, because neither of them are actually interested in that kind of situation. It's just that Nieve is the more ruthless of the two, you know. And it is, you know, it, it, it does really put it out there where, you know, the other one, it, it's, it's this, you know, it's the whole glass ceiling thing. It's, you know, how far are you willing to go for, you know, an advantage over someone of your gender, you know, and I also think it was perfect that there were, only, of, of the seven, there were only two women, 
and just enough for them to compete, but not enough to make it seem like, you know, so, so really, you know, yeah, they have to defeat five men, but they also have to defeat that one woman, because, you know, both of them think that they're the more qualified, that they should get the job, you know, and they know it's going to be so difficult to, you know, even to be able to get the job. It's just, yeah. And then they bring up, you know, Noriego, Noriego, whatever, actually brings up, you know, aren't you a little too old to have children, you know, with the other woman? And it's just, it is devastating because it's just like, you don't say that out loud. You, d what is that, you know? And, and that's how far they've been pushed, even by that point that they, you know, but, but yeah, and just the brilliant kind of reversal of first they vote Julio as the, you know, the leader because they need a group leader. Immediately it's, well, okay, here's some dirt on Julio, or is it really dirt, you know? Now, do you think that we should hire him based on, you know, you six get to decide do you think you should? And and suddenly it's completely like reverse. Suddenly he's on trial, you know, and he has to defend what he did. And it's this sort of was it a betrayal? And if it was, you know, and just that whole thing is just fantastic. I don't know if I mean the lang the main language of the film is Spanish, so maybe it's just. Maybe it's just me, but when the computer shut off, when someone was sacked from the test, from the method, did it sound to anyone else like the computer sort of said, no more, or something like that, you know, something in English that really you know, signified, you're gone, you know. I don't know, maybe, I can imagine that they would do that as a sort of, you know, subtle little thing. I like that near the end we do find out that, you know, it was a lie. There really were cameras filming them the entire time, you know. It wouldn't have been as effective if we had seen that very early on. Now, like, imagine the first time it's brought up, there are probably cameras filming us, and we see, you know, that, you know, being replayed on a video screen or something. Not even necessarily seeing anyone watching, as we never do. That is brilliant. Perfect. We should not see who is watching, if anyone is watching. Or imagine if the moment he had said, nope, there are no cameras, I promise you that, that we had then seen, no, only a little later do we see it was it was a lie and they were right when they guessed that. You know, the whole thing was bringing forward. And I just love the audacity of saying, we could, it's legal, but we don't think it is ethical. You know, and, and that also right there just... It's again this kind of authority thing. The moment he says it, you know, because no one actually protests. No one, I don't think there was even like a reaction shot of someone trying to hide being just offended or dumbfounded by that, just that statement. You know, it is when someone of authority, and at that point he suddenly now has authority, before he... I don't know if, he wasn't downright pathetic, like, you know, nervous guy, but he wasn't really that imposing, but suddenly he has authority. But yeah, so, you know, he, he just makes this declarative statement, and it's just accepted. And that's it, because, you know, that is the power of authority, to just be able to state something with conviction, and have it believed. And it's, it's a terrifying fact. I like that it's suddenly, you know, near the end, it got to be almost kind of comical. And not in the sense that the movie was suddenly being funny. Which I don't think... There are some f slightly funny moments, maybe. But it's really not comedy, you know. It's, it's actually quite a dark film. But 
seeing them throw the ball at each other and, you know, saying these things, you know, it almost seemed like just, this is this is a game, this is someone's amusement, this isn't a test anymore. It's just, you know, they're, they're having fun with these people, at these people's expense almost. Although, you know, <laughs> at least Noriega and Nieva seemed to kind of get into it. But yeah, and just the moment, you know, that they started really going after Spanish Macho, I had pretty well figured that would end with him throwing the ball directly at her face. You know, because that was him. You know, he, it's the frail male ego, you know, that is, and yeah, that just perfect. And he isn't restrained, he isn't thrown out. The, you know, the spy just gets up out, out of his chair. And it's just sort of, you know, if something more were to happen, if Spanish Macho actually, you know, walked towards Nieve, he might have interfered. But it's just that perfect little, you know, there's still, you no, know, he's, he's only just barely going to keep them safe. And it was really partially his fault. You know, he knew that something like that would actually happen, you know. I love the cross-cutting between the two, you know, Nieve and Noriega, when, you know, they're both being told, you've practically won, I mean, you just, or the other one has basically won. You have one last chance, though, but you're gonna have to be ruthless. You're gonna have to give it your all if you, got, if you want this job, you know. And it just, you know, other than, really this kind of you know business structure and this kind of company and this capitalism driven greed and kind of ruthless ambition other than that is also just this you know the the job market in general and just life in general you know how far are you willing to go to make sure that you get by because you know, a lot of us, myself included, would like us to take care of each other, but what if we can't? At first, we're going to have to make sure that we can take care of ourselves, and maybe those closest to us, but definitely ourselves. You know, that whole saying of looking out for number one, you know, you... And, yeah, you know, we are willing to go frighteningly far. And the film does a great job of portraying that. And I do believe that pretty well covers everything I wanted to say about the movie. Yeah. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.